What's going on all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, it brings me so much pleasure to get to talk about one of my most wanted X-Men related omnis. X-Factor by Peter David, Volume 2, or as some of us call it, X-Factor Investigations Volume 1. So, let's find out what is in here. Welcome back, everybody. Now, before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market officially on November 29th. And what we're looking at here is the standard edition cover. And this cover is supplied by Ryan Sook. Now, the direct market cover on the left-hand side is supplied by Pablo Raimondi. Both of these have a different spine image at the bottom, by the way. I always do like to point that out whenever I have the dust jacket file for Marvel. But let's shift the focus back to this. So here we have X Factor by Peter David. Oh, I love that. Look how big that looks. Big and bold. I'm pointing at Peter David. Uh, that's awesome. I love seeing his name on Omnis. You know, it, it just brings me so much joy that there has been so much love for Peter David in Omnibus format and volumes and volumes coming i i love it it's spider-man 2099 is coming and we're also gonna get five volumes of the incredible hulk plus a companion x factor we're getting a volume three. Oh man it's just amazing that we live in this era captain marvel oh love it and he rightly deserves it so here we have x factor by peter david um, interesting that we have his name here and here as well the last names again the image being different on the direct market cover volume two omnibus marvel and then this image right here from ryan sook i love that image it's so awesome and a big part of the story of what's happening in these pages uh now one thing i want you to note is i pointed this out with the copy of new warriors volume two that the spine had changed because if we look at the volume one logo it's different than the volume two. This is X-Factor Investigations era, whereas this is the classic X-Factor era. Again, Marvel has done this before. This time around, I'm pointing again at New Mutants. I'm not sure why I didn't point it. Oh, because I didn't have X-Factor up there before. Uh, but then somebody said, wait, but Excalibur is still the same, and they changed the font. Yeah, I think when was that? Issue number 50? So technically, when and if we get a volume three of Excalibur... They could give us the new logo. But for now, that's what we have. All right, back to this. But yes, I did want to point that out, that there is a new design for the spine. And I'm assuming Volume 3 will have the X-Factor Investigations design. Ugh, this cover comes back to this. Re-examinations. And so does Larry Stroman. And speaking of Larry Stroman, underneath the dust jacket is an image by Larry Stroman from the Secret Invasion tie-in issues with She-Hulk. Now, we're going to crack this book open, talk about why I called it X-Factor Investigations Volume 1, talk about how it fits into the reading order of X-Factor, exactly about how many issues are missing between Volume 1 and this volume, because they weren't written by Peter David, um, and, of course, talk about the build and the page count of the book. Did I talk about... Talking about the stories in here? Maybe I did. Just in case. Uh, there might be some minor spoilers as to where the characters are coming from. Because keep in mind, this is after House of M. This is during the Decimation era of X-Men. So I may have to talk about House of M and the Aftermath. Uh, some of the characters like Quicksilver or Wolfsbane, where she's heading off to. Or what happened to Siren's dad. So just a little bit of spoilers because there were a lot of things going on in the X-Titles. And a lot of it kind of trickled down into these stories in here. Just in case. Minor spoilers. There we go. I promise not to give anything huge away. Including the final issue that's collected in here. Alright, alright, let's get started. Alright, let's crack this book open. Some gray end paper there. And X Factor by Peter David. I love the fact that it didn't say volume 2. Yeah. 
maybe they acknowledge the fact that this is an X-Factor Investigations. And here we have all the creators that put this together. Of course, all of this written by Peter David. But you have different pencilers here. For example, the Madrox miniseries was done by Pablo Raimondi, who comes back later on. Ryan Sooks, Dennis Calero, Ariel Olivetti, doing a different art style than what at least I'm used to. Uh, Koi Palm, Scott Eaton doing the Messiah Complex crossover stories there. And like I said, Pablo Raimondi showing up from time to time. Larry Stroman coming back for the... Well, no, he comes back for just a little bit. Okay, so what does this collect in here? This collects Madrox, the 2004 miniseries, which kind of set the stage, testing the waters to see if there's an interest in these type of stories. All five issues of the miniseries are collected in here. And then we have X-Factor 1 through 20, from 2005 when it was relaunched so it would technically be X Factor Volume 3 because X Factor Volume 1 of course is the one that reunited the original five X-Men characters in a new title called X Factor. Volume 2 was this little mini series set in the early I believe it was the early aughts or late 90s. It's four issues. Nobody talks about it. Uh, and then this would be Volume 3. So collects issues 1 through 20, 21 through 24, just the A stories. The B stories are collected in the endangered species uh, trade paperback and hardcover which leads into messiah complex uh, it also collects issues 25 all the way to 39 it collects the one shot the quick and the dead and the layla miller special one shot as well as she hulk 31 the book has 1128 pages and this was one of my most wanted omnis i wanted x factor investigation in omnibus format uh, because I wanted to share my love of this series. It's such an underrated, phenomenal series. Because during this time, you know, everybody's talking about House of M. Everybody was talking about New X-Men by Grant Morrison. Astonishing X-Men by Joss Whedon. And rightly so. Those titles deserve the love. But hardly anyone was talking about this series. Yet, the few of us that were getting it monthly. This is like one of the last few series I remember buying all the way up until the end. Uh, <laughs> we're surprised that it was still continuing. And we supported Madrox. So Madrox comes at a very interesting time. It takes place before House of M. And it is the story of three characters that were previously with X-Factor. Uh, you have the character of Rain Sinclair. During this time, she was with the... They were called the New Mutants, and then the title switched over to the New X-Men. I'm not talking about Grant Morrison's run. I'm talking about the Colin Yost run when it switched over to the New X-Men. Then you have Guido here, strong guy, and of course, the main character, Jamie Madrox, the multiple man. And all three of these have had a long history together. They were part of Peter David's original X-Factor run. Now, I did say, you know, how much of that is missing. Well, X-Factor by Peter David Volume 1 collects the original X-Factor series when he first started writing it from issue 70 to 92. That series went on to 149 meaning issues 93 to 149 are not collected in omnibus format. I say that, but, I mean, between things like Shattershot, Fatal Attractions, Cyclops, or the Wedding of Cyclops and Phoenix, uh, Phalanx Covenant, Legion Quest, X-Men Avengers, Operation Zero Tolerance, some of them are, but not in full. Uh, of course, we do have the Epic Collections. So these two are the Epic Collections that collect those issues that are not in the omnibus. This one does some double dipping. Uh, but it goes all the way to issue 100, and then this one right here goes all the way to issue 111. Again, that series went to 149. So, Madrox starts pre-House of M. So, we have Mutant Town. We have Madrox starting his investigations unit, and he recruits uh, Guido and Wolfsbane. Because, again, they have had a history. And they start solving some small crimes, and he's having to deal with his multiples. And speaking of multiples, there's a new character that shows up through these pages named Clay, who has a very similar power to that of Multiple Man, that he can multiply himself into, not doppelgangers, but just parts of himself. Of course, Jamie can reabsorb them, but he has a harder time controlling them. Because, as we know in the past, especially in Volume 1, some of his multiple copies can go out there and live lives on their own. They don't need to be reabsorbed by him. Whereas Clay, he has more control of his copies than Multiple Man does. So all this miniseries did was kind of set the stage for what would become 
X Factor Investigations. And this is when I need to talk about the spoiler uh, that sets up the events of X Factor Investigations. Because there was a mutant town during Grant Morrison's time on X-Men. They started this idea that the mutant population is just so huge, they have their own little town. Uh, so that's where they kind of seek sanctuary. And that's where Jamie Madrox opened up X Factor Investigations. Now, there was a few months in between Madrox and X Factor. And between that, we had this huge event called House of M. And in House of M, I'm not going to go into detail as to how, but the mutant population was reduced down to 198 mutants. 90% of the world's mutant population is gone. So a lot of people have lost their powers, including Richter. Uh, Richter was, of course, a member of X-Factor. He later joined the New Mutants and then X-Force. But oh, there's so much history behind all this. I love it. And you don't need to know any of this because Peter David does such a phenomenal job of reintroducing these characters to new readers for the first time. Again, making you care about these characters that, you know, people would be like a guy that can multiply himself and a guy that can shake the earth. Cool. Yeah. It, I think he has this unique ability to throw humor in there and with a lot of heart. He's one of those few writers that can do it and has a well-balanced writing style that makes you care about the characters and also makes you laugh your ass off too. So you have Richter who's having a hard time dealing with this. He lost his mutant powers. He has no idea who he is anymore. He was, you know, this is the kid that got manipulated by Cameron Hodge in the pages of X Factor and now he's contemplating suicide and... That's one of the things that Jamie Madrox is trying to do at the beginning. He's trying to stop him from committing suicide. And one of the things that you learn through here is, again, Jamie has little control over his copies. Sometimes his copies are just parts of himself, parts he doesn't like to talk about, parts he doesn't want to touch again. And that's what you get here. You get this... Well, I'll show you here in a minute. You also get Siren. She comes back. And, of course, her and Jamie have a passed together because of Fallen Angels, the miniseries. And that was talked about in the original X-Factor series by Peter David in that omnibus. Uh, she kind of gets upset because she finds out that maybe it wasn't the real Jamie. And then he starts questioning himself whether he's the original or not. So I always found that unique. Uh, you have Strong Guy, of course, and he had already recruited um, Wolf Spain. But then we also get M. And this is funny. This is when... Richter's asking Jamie, like, how did you get all this money to, like, form your own investigation and hire all these people? So he he went on a game show, I assume it's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. And, you know, the last thing that you can do is call a friend. Well, he had all of his copies just do research while he called it in. He called in the friend. And I thought that was pretty slick of him using his copies to get money. And this is such a cool story. I love this first issue. It means a lot to me because I remember, here's Wolfsbane, and he also, like I said, recruited M from the pages of Generation X. Now, this issue was read to us at Mid-Ohio Con in 2003, right before, or no, 2004, right before it came out uh, to print. And as he, Peter David himself was reading the script, and I love this part right here. The way that he read this, uh, when he finds out, when Richter finds out that the Jamie he's been talking to is one of his copies, but he's not the optimistic copy. He's kind of like that perverse side of him. The part that compels him to do the unexpected. I love this. I'm unpredictable. I'm the X Factor. And he throws Richter off of the building. Now, of course... Richter doesn't die. I'm sure most of you know that he ends up joining the team. But that's how it starts in this whole mystery. The art style gives you this crime noir feel to these stories. Especially the little miniseries. And honestly, a lot of this omnibus feels like that. You're not going to see a ton of action. You're going to see a ton of character development, though. You're going to see a lot of character interaction. One character I didn't talk about from the pages of House of M herself is Layla Miller. And here's M. All looking all perfect. Layla Miller, what an annoying character in the pages of House of M. One dimensional, I thought she was going to be a one trick pony. And then Peter David just utilizes her like I don't think any of the editors or any of the writers had any idea of her full potential. 
she's a character that knows everything. And that's what she is here. She plays this really weird key element. Let me just show you how badass of a character she is. Um, let's see, I think it's in the third issue. So in this third issue, the Singularity Investigations, which works kind of like an opposing force to X Factor, sends in somebody to go in and kill Richter because they think Richter is to blame for the things that are going wrong. And as it turns out, it wasn't Richter that's causing all these issues. It's Layla Miller. And she confronts this killer. Like, she's not shaking. She just looks like this all monotone, talking about how, yeah, you know, you're going to die and no one's going to miss you. Your wife's not going to miss you. Your mom's going to miss you. And he has no idea what this little girl is talking about. He's like, you know, because he's about to kill her. He pulls his knife out and she's like, no, you're not because of these. And she's showing him a bunch of screws. And he gets electrocuted. Oh my gosh, how freaking awesome is that? Like, that is so dark and twisted because you don't know how this character is going to interact with everybody else. You don't know what kind of character she is. You don't know if she's good or evil. Is she working with the Singularity Investigations? Is she part of Excel? Or is she working with the Isolationist? Like, what, what exactly is she? And you get thrown for a loop with things like this. You know, his dying words are, who are you? And she says, I'm Layla Miller. I know stuff. Man, that is so dark. And that's just a small taste of the things that are happening through these pages. Again, all in the aftermath of M-Day. And that's honestly what a lot of the mysteries are at first. They get hired you know, by a bunch of ex-mutants that want their powers back. They want to know exactly what's happened. Like, is the government... That's what XL gets involved here in a little bit. But is the government in... In, at fault for making M-Day? Who took away their powers? It's a dark story about Siren getting kidnapped. Um, and I think that is really cool. It's handled really well where other stories are just branching out to big, epic battles. In the, I'm talking about in the series of X-Men. You know, they were focused more on the bigger picture. They were focused more on making a nation X. Uh, they were focused more about X-Men in space. Peter David was focused more on the idea, look, a lot of these characters lost their powers. How are they going to deal with it? Let's bring it back home. Let's keep this a little more grounded. There are a lot of powerful stories in here. Oh, the Layla Miller story where they get to know her family. This is the one, I believe, issue number seven. This is the one that's drawn by Ariel Olivetti. Not used to his cartoony style like this. I'm so much more used to that CG style, that Doom style, if you will. Now... I talk about the Powered Mutants. I've talked about... This is the um, Civil War crossover right here. They play a small little role in that because of the Mutant Registration Act. But this is still a mutant title, is my point. Because I've talked about how the Powered Mutants, a noir little detective story, but this is still a mutant title. So there's a lot of angst here. And it tends to flow heavy, and it tends to flow often. Now... In the aftermath of House of M, um, and we also have the aftermath of X-Men, Deadly Genesis, Cyclops comes and lets Siren know what ends up happening to Banshee. And I like her reaction. Her reaction is an honest reaction as someone that has been with the X-Men for a long time. We also get the return of this gentleman right here, who was part of the original Peter David X Factor team. And in House of M Aftermath, you can read exactly what role he had to play in that. And he turns more into a villain type of character through these pages. I like the com uh, confrontation here with Layla Miller about her knowing stuff. She knows everything. We have Jamie becoming part of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a little bit. Uh, we have Betrayals. Man, this is such a good freaking just series. It was so good. Oh, issue 13. Let's talk about this. So, in issue 87 of X-Factor, I think I've gone on about how that single issue in one page made so many of us a Quicksilver fan. So, Peter David wanted to revisit that. He wanted to do another therapist session. This time around with the same characters, but also some new members. So, this is re-examinations. Yes, we go back to that couch scenes these characters are just talking about their problems you can find out who they're talking to later on although i'm sure pretty much if you read the original one you know who they're talking to 
but it's a deep character study on all of these characters, whether they're new or old. Uh, but I found that such a good follow-up. Oh, such a heartbreaking scene right here. Guido blames himself for something that he was not in charge of. Uh, let's see here. There's M looking all fine, being all perfect. You know, I never did care for her character in the pages of Gen X. And then eventually she... Um, well, they kind of changed her story around with M Plate and Penance and all that. This is a really cool story. This is Jamie visiting one of his dupes that has kind of gone rogue and started his own family. And Jamie didn't know about it. And confronting that dupe. I thought that was such a good and powerful story. How to deal with things like that. Does he absorb him? Does he let him go and live his own life? Because he's still part of him. He has every right to absorb him. And this is the beginning of the XL saga. That's C-L-L. -L. These are a group of mutants. You have Callisto, Fatal in there. Uh, you also have, who is it? The Abyss. Uh, Marrow. She's one of the characters. And Reaper. They pretty much blame the government for taking their powers away. And somehow, this guy can give them powers. Now, there is a secret to that. Um, that was actually in the... It talks about it in the... Uh, oh, what was it? The Quicksilver miniseries. The Son of M. That's what it was. Part of the Decimation story arc. And that's kind of how he's able to restore people's powers. And you can read that on your own. That can be found in the prelude to the War of the Kings omnibus. Then we get this big guy right here. I really found this character in interesting. This is the Iso Isolationist. Valerie Cooper returns... And this is a good sit down and talking about the rights and wrongs of the world between a character who obviously looks like a super villain and Jamie Madrox trying to figure out exactly what this character wants. Oh, man, so many twists and turns. There is a pregnancy here. There are people uh, sleeping around here. Oh, man, what they do with Quicksilver. Like you start feeling sorry for him and you understand why he has become a super villain. Or sort of a super villain, I guess. I noticed that at least four of my pages were faded out like this. And I don't think that's every copy. I just think it's my copy. Sometimes I've seen that happen in Epic Collections. I've seen it happen in Omnis. I've seen it happen in hardcovers. Uh, sometimes the printer just eventually starts running out of ink and nobody gives them a warning. But this is what you get. Doesn't look horrible. Uh, but you get about four pages. Usually it's like two there and then two later on. But let's keep flipping through here because we can't talk about each story. All right. And it is collected in here, but you do get the issues of second, or not second coming, I'm sorry, Messiah Complex. Now, they give you a quick recap as to what's happened because they're not going to collect all of Messiah Complex. I'm sure those will be Omnis one day. You just get the X Factor issues. Uh, but I think in the trade paperbacks, those were left out and they were left out of the complete collections, but they are in here, and I'm glad they included them in here because it does change the character of Madrox when he returns. Um, after Messiah Complex, he's a changed character. He's a lot more mature. And you're going to see a lot of that here. You're going to see a lot of character growth. I started loving M. Like, I hated M in Generation X. And I didn't like her at the beginning because she's all snooty and just not my type of character. But man, she's so flawed. I love the just character progression in just M herself. Poor Siren trying to give up alcohol and dealing with that and dealing with loss. And then... Later on, man. But yeah, I love that. And then the team, you know, gets a little bit disbanded because after the events of Messiah Complex, there is an X-Force. And X-Force, if this is the Colin Yost X-Force, not the original X-Force, nor the Rick Remender X-Force, but the Colin Yost team had Rain, Wolfsbane as one of the characters. So she ends up leaving the team. And it's a throwback, actually, to issue, what was it, issue 99 of New Mutants? where Richter writes her a letter, a goodbye letter. And now she's writing him a letter. But not to worry, because other characters end up joining. All right, but before we talk about other characters, well, yeah, here they are. Longshot and Darwin, they show up. Darwin, of course, from Deadly Genesis, and Longshot from the original Longshot series by Anna Senti and Larry, uh, not Larry Stroman, Arthur Adams, and then eventually X-Men. But Larry Stroman makes a return here. Now... Here's the thing with Larry Stroman. I actually love his artwork. And I think that in the comments section of the first volume, there were people that were hating on his art. 
Definitely an acquired taste. It's not for everybody, and I understand it. But man, did he draw some big booties. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Just saying. My goodness. This is the crossover with She-Hulk, and of course it's part of the uh, Secret Invasion crossover where they think that Longshot is a scroll. And what exactly is going on? Well, you can read it to find out. Then we have the Layla Miller one-shot. What in the world is this about? Who is this character? Where has she been? She's been missing for a while. And yes, eventually Longshot and Darwin end up joining the team to make up for some other team members that have left. That's what I loved about this. For the most part, you know, most of this, the big chunk of this, it's mainly Multiple Man, it's Wolfsbane, it's M, it's Layla Miller, it's Siren, and Strong Guy. But later on, you know, they kind of go through some character changes. Characters come and go, depending on what writer wants to work on what story. Now, I'm not going to talk about the final issue, um, with the exception of this right here. I love this, because in between issues 38 and 39, there were a lot of things happening. So what Peter David decides to do here is just recap what would have happened, and he's like, look, that would have made a boring issue. Let's just get to the birth. And you can find out how that goes. And believe me, you're going to want to read the next issue as soon as you see the finale here. The final part of that story. Did I say next issue? Yeah, that will be in the next volume. So let's, let's take a look at the variant covers here in second printings. It's a Joe Quesada throwback to issue 87 of the original X Factor. This is the Messiah Complex variant covers. Madrox number five afterward from Andy Schmidt. Character designs. And oh, this is the connecting covers. Cyclops data files and original artwork. Now, as far as the binding, it is sewn binding, and here is that eye, 1128 pages. This one printed at the Donley printer. And I'm serious, this is a fun, dark, heartfelt omnibus. There's a lot of heart that goes into this. And it's the type of humor that you don't really see a lot of places. It's not really breaking the fourth wall in your face like Deadpool, but there are some funny things in here. Like, there's a character that mentions that M has a lot of issues. And Richter mentions, like, dude, let me tell you, she doesn't have issues. She gets to trade paperbacks. Little jokes like that. That's the kind of humor that's all over the place here. So, yeah, I would love to know who is checking it out. This is uh, definitely gets one of the Uncanny Omars must-buy for this year. It's one of my most wanted Omnis, and now it's here. We're getting a Volume 3, and hopefully a Volume 4 to wrap up the series. It's phenomenal, completely underrated, and now I'm so glad that so many people get to read it for the first time. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below which cover you're going to pick up. I'm just assuming you're going to pick this book up. I, I don't know. Maybe some of you didn't like X-Factor Investigations. But in all seriousness, this is some of the best written characters. Peter David will just make you care about these C and even D tier characters. But I would love to know if you've read this, what you think about the series, if you loved it, if you didn't like it. Uh, if you're avoiding it, if you're going to go back and get Volume 1, not that, not that there's a Volume 2 from a series that didn't happen until about almost 15 or so many years after Volume 1 had ended. But yeah, I would love to know all those comments down below. Smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications. Any questions, leave them down below as well. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.